Muscles don't stretch. They slide. What is that story about? Well, it's true. At least it seems to be true from what we know so far. Okay, so the muscles are connected to the nervous system at the neuromuscular junction. That's what we're seeing in this video right now. And so the muscle contraction begins with a neural impulse that's going to arrive at the muscle myofibril here. You'll see that, and this is the functional unit I'll be talking about, the sarcomere. Now you can see why muscles really don't stretch, they slide. Because there's different types of actin and myosin filaments, and they're going to slide past each other. See, it looks like we're stretching, but under the microscope, we can see the myosin which are the thick filaments attached to the M line, are going to slide past the actin, which is attached to the Z line. Okay. And here, let's stop for a minute. What happens is when that impulse hits, well, we'll take a look at this. When the impulse hits, calcium is going to be released and it's going to bind to troponin. All right, and you might think, well, who cares about all this stuff? But you know what? The, it is important because when we understand muscle contraction, then we know how to work our own body. Okay, so we're kind of picking up where we left on the last story. Actin and myosin sliding past each other. Z-line, M-line. Now at close inspection, we see the myosin heads, and they're going to pull the actin past them. So we need ATP and calcium atp for energy to form a cross bridge calcium to open the site all right there you have it okay so remember that all right it's good to see these things in action now let's take a look at some of these words so troponin it has a receptor site and when calcium is released then it's going to cause tropomyosin big words here to slide to the side, and now myosin can bind and power stroke it. Power stroke it so it slides. Okay, and I drew it because sometimes I have to draw these things to really understand them. So there's a myosin with a head, there's an the actin with a binding site. When calcium binds to troponin, then this site becomes available, and this head is going to push it past. The myosin filament so actin has action it's sliding all right there we have actin there's myosin i, I know it's kind of complicated but but uh, i hope this helps to go through some parts of it okay so this sliding mechanism occurs in a unit called sarcomere and i don't know if you remember on that video but i said okay the functional here sarcomere so we have the actin thick filaments attached to the m line see so it's, it's, it's the same story over and over, I'm telling you. We're just seeing it in different ways because it helps sometimes to see it different ways. And then here's this must be the actin attached to the Z line. And so when we look at muscles under the microscope, their striped appearance is because of these lines. At least a striated muscle looks that way. All right, so most of this review I'm covering, it is all review, M line, myosin, Z line for actin, and these two filaments slide past each other within a functional unit called a sarcomere. So sarco, you're going to see that prefix a lot. Sarco refers to muscle. All right, so how do we get this energy for the power stroke? Well, uh, creatine is produced by the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or SR, and I, I wrote that word earlier in this lecture. Uh, arginine and glycine are amino acids that we can make creatine with. So don't buy this stuff. Like a lot of salespeople will tell you, oh, here, I got a creatine powder for you. Nah, just eat foods that have arginine and glycine and you make your own. Uh, that's just a cheap way. Same with nitric oxide, right? You can eat nuts and seeds and beets, dark chocolate, leafy greens, meat, and make your own nitric oxide. And what that's going to do is expand or dilate your blood vessels. And so we get more nutrients into the muscle fiber. And if we have more nutrients, 
that means we have more ATP for the power stroke of myosin. Now you gotta have calcium. Now a lot of you know bodybuilders, they're, they're drinking protein shakes during the workout, which do you see the word protein anywhere here? No, all right. Uh, serious athletes know that we need ATP energy and calcium. And then afterwards, okay, some protein for recovery. But during the workout, mm, focus on what your muscles need. They need energy and calcium. All right, rigor mortis, that is the stiffness of death. 24 to 60 uh, hours after death. And now that we understand actin and myosin, we can see that uh, without ATP energy, then I'll get to this, then the, this is all gonna lock up. All right. Muscle twitch, that's when they all contract at the same time. Tetanus is just a sustained twitch. Isotonic, that is when the sarcomere shortens. So that's what I've been talking about. Eccentric is when the muscle lengthens, let's just say lengthen, during recovery. And so in a, if you ever go to a gym and people are banging their weights down, that means they're not using eccentric. Eccentric should be a slow recovery, of, uh, like letting the weights down slowly. Isometric is, is different. There's no shortening of the muscles uh, at the end of the concentric phase. Uh, you know, sometimes it's better just to see these things than to, to talk about them. So here's a famous IPF battle between Amanda and Danielle. Let's get to the, yeah, here, get to the, okay, so we can see isometric, isotonic. All right. Isometric right there. All right, so we have Amanda. So, so let's watch it again this time without disturbance, hopefully. We're going to have isometric, so the muscles don't shorten. She's going down for her lift. Yeah, good, get, the, get oxygen in the blood. Okay, isometric, isotonic. Now here comes the eccentric, but it's real quick. See, uh, in, in powerlifting, they, they do a short eccentric. Sprain, okay, that is ligaments. Calcaneal fibular, which is a good name because calcaneal is the heel bone. Fibula is on the lateral side of the leg, so calcaneal fibular. This is when you roll your foot laterally. This is a very common sprain. Shin splints, muscles along the tibia, which is the lower bone of the leg. Loose bodies, when we have torn cartilage, it floats around in a synovial joint. Tenosynovitis, the uh, inflammation of the sheath around a tendon, sometimes repetition or infection. Meniscus care, this is a crescent-shaped um, cartilage. There's a pair of them under uh, each femur on the cap of the tibia and sometimes twisting and pressure like the worst is like a, a guy is carrying his girlfriend on his back and someone shouts at him and he turns around and there goes the meniscus or someone's skiing and they make a turn and that knee is not designed for shearing action there goes the meniscus okay achilles tendonitis okay the new name is calcaneal tendon uh, because Achilles is a mythology. Calcaneal is a good name because there's a calcaneus, there's a gastrocnemius, the calf muscle. And so this tendon can get ruptured, which is, uh, you know, it's common that we don't want it to be chronic or this tissue starts to get pits in it and it's not elastic anymore. And you can't reverse that. So uh, most of these injuries, you want to treat them quickly. Now, sometimes surgery is not needed, like meniscus can heal if it's mild, but often it needs to be sewn down or um, trimmed a bit. Bursitis, okay, we have these little pellows of uh, bursa, they're called, that just help with the uh, sliding action between bones and muscles and tendons, and sometimes they become inflamed. All right, so Achilles tendon bursitis, is just one, but uh, also happen in the shoulder and other uh, synovial joints. A strain, okay, so that sounds almost like a sprain. Sprain is a ligament, strain is a muscle. And there's different grades of strain. The um, uh, one, two, three, and four, 
Some are so bad you can't even stand up. Others are just a little bit of annoying pain. All right, common uh, locations of strains are the hamstrings. And here we have the fastest human on earth. Bolt didn't make it to the uh, Olympics in Japan because of multiple injuries, but notoriously the hamstrings. Bicep femoris, always on the lateral aspect of the back of the leg. I always tell students, easy to say, easy to reach. Bicep femoris, two heads on that muscle. And here's the semitendinosis, which is hard to say, hard to reach. You got to reach back there. And then semimembranosis is, is a lot smaller, kind of wraps around the bone a bit. And of course, the adductor longus, this has ended a lot of careers, called the groin muscle. And uh, what's the action of the adductor longus muscle? Adduction. All right, what's the action of the hamstrings? Well, when you look at a muscle, you've got to think, okay, what's going to happen when that muscle shortens? Okay, I can look at any muscle in the body. And I can know, okay, when that muscle contracts, like the deltoid, then we're going to have abduction of the arm. Okay, there's, it's, it's real simple. You don't even have to memorize these things. You can just, okay, let's see. Let's get a side view of this guy. Here we go. So here are the hamstring muscles, uh, semi-tendinosis. Watch this. We're shortening the angle. Anytime we shorten the angle during a muscle action, we call that flexion. Okay. So the action of the hamstring is real simple. They're gonna go from an extended to a flexion. There we have it. You're shortening the angle, right? You go from a 180 to like a 90 degree, and that is called flexion. Hamstrings and a Dr. Longus. All right, moving on. Plantar fasciitis. The first name gives you a hint. Plantar is the bottom of the foot. So the calcaneal tendon, if we have a tight calf muscle, a gastroc, or a lot of, of inflammation, then this fascia becomes inflamed. S uh, sole of foot. Oh my gosh. That's at the sole. All right. Uh, and there's different treatments. Some people will put golf balls in the freezer and then they'll roll their foot on them. And, but, you know, um, every patient is different. And sometimes the cause of the plantar fasciitis is in the way they walk or their um, their activities. It's it's a hard one to treat. Iliotibial band, good name because it starts at the ilium, uh, the top of the hip, goes down to tibia. So iliotibial band, perfect name. Uh, sometimes it becomes inflamed and the pain tends to be on the lateral aspect of the knee. And so sometimes people say, oh, I have a knee injury, but there's no inflammation, no swelling. But there's pain so we think hmm it may be this entire uh, apron of cartilage and not so much the knee and they get rollers there's different things that people do for this uh, every every patient again uh, there's no standard treatment for everyone muscular dystrophy all right this tends to be a genetic disease I mean, rarely does a virus or an infection cause it or trauma although it can happen um, but in this case, sarcomere. What, okay, what's a sarcomere again? Those are the functional units. That's a good review for us of where actin and myosin slide past each other. And so actin and myosin function within a unit called a sarcomere. All right, so something's happening. The sarcomere is not, um, the sliding's not happening. Or sometimes the uh, could be autoimmune. Something's happening and the muscle fiber just gradually breaks down. All right. Thanks for listening.